you probably already know where this is going. So recently, my body, my choice, my body, my choice, my body, my choice. The Supreme Court plans on overturning Roe v. Wade. And this is not something anyone is surprised about. This has been a decades long campaign. So I did some research and it was really interesting. And so I'm going to give you a quick crash course on the history of abortion in America, what's happening right now, and what could happen if Roe v. Wade is overturned. A draft opinion by Justice Samuel A. Alito Jr. draws on an old conservative argument that abortion is not rooted in the nation's history and tradition. This is not true. There are decades of scholarship on the subject of abortion in America. Abortions weren't even being pushed to be banned until the 1850s, and they weren't actually banned until the 1890s. It was banned nationwide by the 1910s. The man who pushed for abortions to be banned, you're not going to be surprised. His name was uh, J. Marion Sims. And he is also famous for doing experiments on enslaved black women without anesthesia. He would cut them open. Yep. And this man is known as the father of gynecology. Why would, why would gynecology have a father? Let's not get into it. He also pushed for abortionists to not be women, to all be men, to make it harder for women to get abortions. Another reason they banned abortion was to keep a white majority. It was white women who could afford medical abortions. America had experienced several decades of increased immigration by the 1910s. Worried about losing their hold on the country, white men in power supported abortion bans as a way to get upper class white women to have more children. <sighs> That's right, the men wanted more babies and knew the women didn't, so they made it illegal to not have babies. <sighs> I mean, I guess, I guess. And let's not forget that women didn't have the right to vote until the 1920s, so all these laws men voted for, fully. In 1930, almost one in five reported deaths from pregnancy were from illegal abortions. Over the next couple decades, the media depicted the gruesome reality of illegal abortion and a call for abortion law reform was made. What really pushed for abortion to be legalized was in 1952, many women were taking thalidomide to ease pregnancy symptoms, but the whole time thalidomide causes birth defects. So there was all these women who were told that they had to keep these babies that they knew were likely to have birth defects. A great example of how media can change culture is a famous news anchor woman was pregnant and had been taking thalidomide and she recorded her journey of going to Sweden to get a legal abortion. In 1965, it was deemed legal for married women to use birth control, the pill. This gave women a lot of freedom. In 1966, nine doctors were found to be giving abortions to women who had been exposed to rubella, which causes birth defects. And the nation came to the rescue, and California became the first state to reform their abortion law to allow hospital committees to approve requests for abortions. In 1969, NARL, an organization solely for the purpose of repealing abortion bans, was founded here in Chicago. By the 1970s, the whole country was calling for the legalization of abortion. In 1972, birth control was legalized for everyone. It set the precedent that people have a constitutional right to privacy via the 14th Amendment and due process. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Using the same argument, abortion was legalized in 1973, Roe v. Wade. There was backlash after Roe v. Wade legalized abortion. In the 80s, people getting abortions were assaulted and harassed by men outside abortion clinics. Abortion providers were murdered. This spawned the anti-abortion mob that we still see today. How they're overturning Roe v. Wade is Mississippi wants to ban abortion. Of course they do. It's Mississippi. How they decided they were going to do this is to ban abortions past 15 weeks. Right now, how the law is written is an abortion before 12 weeks is not the government's business. A woman has full right to get an abortion before 12 weeks. 
in the second trimester a woman can get an abortion the government can regulate it but they can't ban it until the fetus is considered viable which is they say 24 weeks but it's actually about 28 so what this mississippi law banning at 15 weeks would do is give women and people with uteruses two and a half to three months less time to terminate their pregnancy and it's not even really about the abortion because only seven eight percent of abortions occur after 12 weeks anyway. What makes Roe v. Wade getting overturned terrifying is it set the precedent for the right to privacy. They're not so much going for abortion as they are going for the right to privacy. Right now the right to privacy blocks a lot of laws from being constitutional. If the right to privacy is overturned for Roe v. Wade, they could go for same-sex marriage, contraception, and gender-affirming care. The right has been working on this for a long time. 13 states have trigger laws that come into effect as soon as Roe v. Wade is to be overturned. One of these trigger laws in Wisconsin is from 1849 and will immediately ban abortions. Over time, probably 26 out of our 50 states will ban abortion. The average person seeking an abortion is only in their 20s, unmarried, poor, of a marginalized group, rural, and probably already has a child. If someone already has a child and they don't want to have another one, and they know what having a child is like, why make them have another one? A woman getting an abortion does not mean that she's never going to have a baby. She just can't support one right now. And she knows that. One out of every four people with a uterus will get an abortion in their lifetime. People say the alternative is adoption. Adoption is an alternative for parenting, not pregnancy. Being pregnant is not something to take lightly. Abortions are safer than pregnancy until abortions are made illegal. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, poor black women will suffer the most. Our system is already racist. Black women in America have the highest childbirth mortality rate of the first world countries. Besides that being obviously obscenely racist, there are already gaps in affordable health care. Poor black women are also who will likely have to turn to illegal abortion and risk their lives. People who are in the states that ban them will have to, some will even have to drive through two states to get to somewhere where it is legal for them to terminate their pregnancy. This will put states that are surrounding those banned states at capacity in their hospitals. So states that decide to not change their laws will still be affected. Abortions are not an issue. They were at a record low in 2019. In the same year, red states started criminalizing and banning it. They did this knowing that it would get to the Supreme Court, which would be right-leaning. Making abortions illegal does not stop abortions. It stops legal abortions. It stops safe abortions. Do you know how gnarly a homemade abortion is? You see those signs with the coat hangers. You, you imagine, you imagine, you imagine how gnarly, how absolutely brutal a homemade abortion is. If these people are willing to risk their lives to get an illegal abortion, they must know that they really cannot handle having these kids. Why force them to carry them? Even medical abortions are not pleasant the woman still has to give birth to the fetus in some cases. It's still traumatic. What's really scary is I've heard a lot of people talk about pregnancy as a punishment for a woman having sex. And that is why they are anti-abortion. They believe that people use abortion as a kind of birth control, which I can assure you no woman does. Because, again, abortion is not pleasant, so people are anti-abortion because they want a woman to be punished for having sex. At the end of the day, these people are not pro-life, they are just good old-fashioned misogynists. They want to teach a whore lesson by making a mother of her. So you think this person is not being a person properly, and so you want them to make another person and raise them? What do you think is going to happen? Abortion restrictions haven't been this bad since 1973, when Roe v. Wade was written into law. Many states want to greatly decrease the abortion window, which again, isn't that big of a deal. Only 7-8% of abortions are done past 12 weeks. However, you like learn growing up that you know you're pregnant once you miss one period. But actually periods are not regular. I wouldn't know I was pregnant until I had missed two. Um, and a lot of women are used to not getting their period at all. This is about bodily autonomy the right to our own bodies. Delete your period tracker apps. There are already men planning on selling the data to the police. What we can do right now and are already doing is signing petitions, protesting, 
contacting your senator, push for affordable health care. The Affordable Care Act actually greatly decreased abortions because women had affordable access to contraception, protect contraception, protect gay rights, protect gender affirming care, and stay hopeful. In the long run, be good that this is happening because everything has to fall apart to come together. There needs to be an action for a reaction. I believe the shorties are gonna go crazy. We're gonna end up with more rights than we started with. Overturning Roe v. Wade is racist, classist, and sexist. Racist because people of color will suffer the most, classist because people in poverty will suffer the most, and sexist because people with uteruses will suffer the most.